Dear God, it's happening. These are the first words my friend used when I asked her about the feelings that are provoked when she hears about climate change. And I wanted to learn more about how young adults are feeling about and understanding climate change because they're part of an important generation of people that are both aware of what the world used to be like and aware that that world is not going to last. They're in their mid-twenties and already in the workforce, and they have the potential and passion to implement change that could really impact our future. And I talked to two different people, my partner Chris, who is 26 and works as a massage therapist, and my childhood friend Chloe, who is 23, has an associate's degree and works as a bud tender in a dispensary. These are the two people I'm closest with and therefore I think have the biggest influence on my own personal beliefs and lifestyle choices. I was interested in seeing where their response are similar and perhaps where they differed, especially as someone who has spent years surrounded by people learning and educating about the environment. I was interested in knowing what people outside of my academic bubble tend to think about the environment. And both of them are worried. They're worried for a future that seems inevitable and they worry about the amount of deniers who will potentially delay progress that needs to be made now. And they believe that people that can really implement change do not care at all about the one thing we should care about the most. And it was a resounding yes when I asked whether they felt humans were responsible for the change in climate. However, neither of them felt like they talked about climate change much on a day-to-day -day basis, and even more so with coronavirus because it's overwhelming to have to worry about both things at once. One of the main things that came up the most was recycling. It's one of the first things that came to mind and both believed that there could be better implementation both on an individual and structural scale. They both try to produce less waste that would contribute to pollution by either limiting their purchasing of plastic products, for example, or shopping secondhand. Chloe expressed considerable concern with littering. Due to their own research, they've both become more cognizant of their footprint on the planet. They're noticing the world around them in new ways. Like Chloe noticed that this past year, the ground in Maryland never froze enough for the snow to really stick. Winters are getting warmer and summers are getting hotter and she found it alarming because it's not just Maryland that's experiencing this, but it's all over the world. I asked them about their thoughts regarding current solutions that are perhaps more controversial, like complete renewable energy, plant-based diets, and having less children. They were both very supportive of them all, however, even though both are already longtime vegetarians, Chris expressed concern about this actually being an effective solution. He said that people are resistant to even slight changes that are little inconveniences. And if you try to take away something that is so ingrained in people's lifestyles, they're not going to react positively. Both mentioned on their own their concern regarding the effect animal agriculture has on the planet. And Chris believed that it would be more effective to go after factory farming industries directly rather than trying to bring down the demand by asking people to change. Chloe differed slightly by saying that solutions will likely come from the bottom up through small changes in individuals. Inconvenience is a word that got thrown around a lot during both interviews. I asked them why they think so many people are resistant to believe that the climate is changing. And something that Chris said was, a lot of the time people don't really have a high degree of care for what's really true, especially if the truth is inconvenient. And they both believe that people are resistant to change because changing is inconvenient to their current lifestyles. However, their current lifestyles are not sustainable. They mention these drivers of resistance as religion, lack of education, and a lack of trust in authority. They don't believe that people are ignorant to the state of the planet. They think more so it's a matter of values. They express trust in scientists and felt the importance of educating yourself through credible sources and forming your own understanding of the facts. Even though I spend so much of my time studying the environment, interviewing my friends has made me realize that I've never really asked them about their thoughts on these topics. We really only discuss climate change when some dramatic and new information is released, and the people in my life are worried for the future, but the silver lining is that the impending doom has made them realize that how we treat the planet really matters. <laughs>